Welcome everyone to my YouTube channel. I'm Uriah Westman. I'm a stand-up comedian and I love movies. I, I, I see a movie every day in the theaters. Um, sometimes I see up to six movies a day. Do I have a problem? No. Why do you see so many movies, Uriah? Well, I like to see movies because I believe movies are the real miracles in life. Because when you're seeing them, you're not just seeing a movie. You're seeing something that's created by someone who's written it. Someone then tries to sell that script. Then the movie has to get made. Then they have to find a director, cinematographer, assistant director. Then you find all these people. Then they need to get it financed. Then they need to get it, get it greenlit. Then they need to find a distributor. And then the miracle is then actually somebody watches it without going to the theater. And some buffoon decides to talk on their phone the entire time. And somehow you end up having a good experience in the cinema in 2024 that is why movies are miracles and today i'm gonna be talking about five of the miracles that i'm calling final girl summer that's right hashtag final girl summer and only the hashtag of a man with 4.5 thousand subscribers is gonna start a hashtag that is going to go all the way there right here but basically what i'm gonna do is, is tell you exactly what i love in a movie and tell you why I love these movies. Because the thing is, is I see so many movies, I can't always go to a movie with someone to discuss it. So normally I just go on Letterboxd and I write my review, five stars, four stars, three stars, two stars, one star. I told you what all the stars are gonna be. But I tell you what, this is what I look for in a movie, is 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 I can I cannot care. The plot can be unbelievable. There could be plot holes galore. But if I can tell that the cinematographer and the director had a vision and a style that they wanted to convey to the viewer and that is properly done and keeps me just engaged that way, I can let so much go. Or if you just have a lead actress or actor that is so committed to the role and so right for the role, I can let everything go. It could be technically a horrible B movie, but you know what? That actor, that actress gave it all. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go go ahead and give that five stars, four stars. One example of this, uh, what just came out, would be Skincare with Elizabeth Banks. Kind of horror, but mostly thriller about someone entrepreneur has their own makeup line in Hollywood. Right about to launch it, then everything starts going wrong in their life, and someone starts messing with her. It's a very clever thriller that I think works because of how strong Elizabeth Banks is in it. That's not quite a final girl like horror film, but it's very good. I just saw it's only in the theaters for like a week, so look for look for that on like uh, physical media and, and, and pay per view, P uh, VOD. This would be pay per view now. It's VOD. Ah, where wherever you get your stuff, or wait for it to be on Tubi and watch it with ads. And Tubi actually is is the best at like paying out creators. And I hate that I just said creator, I, movie makers. Then, of course, once you talk about horror films, it's like how 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 suspenseful it is, how um how much I care about the characters, and of course, lighting, tension, and a lot of people think like a scary movie is just like jump scares here and there, like Blumhouse. But to me, is like one that like haunts you. That's the mark of a good movie is one that's gonna haunt you forever, and that's and that uh, miracles can haunt you forever. Uh, the great film like. One of these Final Girl movies is Cuckoo. And I saw this seven times in the theater. I get it. Some people don't love it. I love this movie. Hunter Schaefer, the lead, is just unbelievable. Every character in this film is so weird. It's like in a Twin Peaks vibe. And I, I want to know every single thing about even the most minor characters. That's how well they're casted. And that's how well they're essentially written in their couple lines that they're going to have. Because that movie is just essentially a basic plot about a 17-year-old who has to move to another area, isolated, doesn't know anyone, and wants to do anything they can to just get back to that life that they had, even if that her life is just gone forever. And every single summer, I'm always waiting for this type of film that is like, oh, this is a type of world that I want to visit during the summer. Like, weird... Uh, especially like a place that's typically like very snowy. It's a resorty town. Like no one's around. So just the isolation, that, uh, the isolation that you're just going to feel like she can't go anywhere. She only has her bike. One of the best scenes in the movie is when she's being chased on the bike. I don't want to give anything away, 
If I tell you why, this is a neon film, and neon is on a hot streak right now. And that's going to lead us right into, you got it, Long Legs, Micah Monroe, Nicolas Cage, Os- directed by Og- Osgood Perkins. I have one of those horrifying posters I got at the 35 millimeter uh, screening at the Vista, signed by Osgood Perkins, and it is uh, just uh, like a black and white of Nicolas Cage's The Monster. And I tell you what, I think I'm going to have to move this in the place that I don't see the first thing I do when I look in the morning. I should be looking at the sun in the morning, not a monster and a killer. <laughs> but that is just, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a vibe. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's bringing you into this world that is, that is not that different than ours, but, but just leaves you with this haunting feeling. There's a couple like places where, especially this barn scene where the camera just moves away from the characters and just like holds into the darkness of the woods. And there could be something there. You don't know, but you're looking and there doesn't need to be like that jump scare Blumhouse type thing. And the director showed a lot of like restraint and like at the Q and a, there's one thing he says, like he, he, uh, like the playfulness of like Nicolas Cage. Some people are going to be terrified by Nicolas Cage. Some people just can't get over the fact that it's Nicolas Cage and enjoy the film and laugh at it. But he wanted that like, like, like sometimes a film will build tension and release it with a jump scare. I think he, he kind of went like a comedy route and built the tension, like a setup to a, to like a dark joke. And then the punchline would be like you laughing at something. So, Definitely Long Legs is, it's made over $100 million. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm so excited what Neon is going to do next. The the third one here, this one is not out yet. It's called Strange Darling. It was filmed on 35 millimeters, so style, check. They know exactly what they want, and this is essentially another film, only a couple locations, and some surprises there. It's, 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 it's an amazing thriller. I had no idea where it was going. I got to see this again. I just saw the advanced screening. And it has a very, like, a glittery vibe to it. Very gory. Um, very, very, like, like fast-paced. It, it does cut, cut yeah, it's, it's divided into six different chapters, and it just cuts around. And I tell you what, there's, there, it, it, sometimes I don't like that when, when it will like cut around and then you start learning there. But I tell you what, it wasn't until like, like the, the third act that I really go, wow. Okay. I did not see that coming. And I'm not a type of person that will like try to predict the film. You'll see a lot of reviewers. It's like, Hey, I, 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 I knew where the film was going. It's like, what, the, how are you going to enjoy any film? If you're trying to live ahead of the characters the entire time, I get it. Well, I get it where the, the, the audience already knows and you wait for the characters to catch up, but all these reviews is, oh, the movie didn't go the way I wanted it to go. It went a different way. It's like that's a that's a, a, a total viewpoint that, it, that has nothing to do with what the director or the writers wanted. Like you wanting the film to go somewhere else is just is just like a critique that I, I don't care about. I get, oh, duh, that was unbelievable. I can't believe that. It's a movie. Like – there's a there's a certain amount of suspension of disbelief that you kind of need. You're not going in there. Oh, it's a practical way. I need this to happen. I need this to happen. It's, it's you 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 gotta accept what's gonna be. But of course, if there's no style, and there's no and no substance, that completely ruins the entire thing. I tell you what, like just good lighting in a in a film can make or break it. Like like a and that, it's expensive and it's good, but I mean, you get good lighting in a film. I, am I going to do top five lidded films? Probably, probably not, because I know nothing about lighting, as you can tell now. Uh, so yeah, and the director is. I love it when someone goes. Well, I seen them in this show, and now they're like the cinematographer, and that was the guy from Sneaky Pete. This amazing two two seasons. Uh, I think I think it's on uh, Amazon Prime. Check that out. And that's I I don't remember. I don't know. I can't pronounce his name probably, and I'm not gonna try. You go check it out. But he's he's a cinematographer. I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. He's in a TV series that I got to experience his characters, and now he's creating characters for me to enjoy. Abs- absolutely amazing, and I'm here for. It. And of course, oh, this is gonna be one. Everyone's gonna be like, oh the the, the most polarizing uh, alien movie that maybe has ever came out in the last uh, bit of this since Alien versus Predator. 
But this was Alien Romulus. And you know what? I liked it. I like Fede Al- Alvarez of, of Don't Breathe. I love Don't Breathe. It's just like it's one of those films. I wish it didn't start showing you how it gets to the third act. I hate it when movies do that. It never helps. I don't want to see the third act and then it goes back in time where I know it's going to lead to. I think that's where it's just the studio's like, okay, you got it. You got to change this. And the studio knows can ruin a movie too. It can have complete style. And the studio's like, yeah, I dilute it. Make it make it something that that we all that all general audiences can digest, and that's the the basic uh, you know, Blumhouse script. I would I would say, but I, but I enjoyed it. How some scared the sound design. I I I love the aliens. I didn't see. I only seen Alien and this one. And you're like, oh, you're, oh, you're right. You really like movies. How 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 did you not see other alien movies? Well, the thing is, is I grew up in a, in, a, in a three different cults. I got a one man show about it called Three Cults Walk Into a Bar. That's why I haven't seen them. And it's also the type of thing where I don't want to like watch it on my computer. I don't want to watch it. Uh, on the TV, it's the type of like thing I want to see aliens in the theater. There's a lot of like films awaiting the rewatch in the theater to get the full experience that I'm not gonna get where I might like check my phone a couple times. This one is it's kind of fi- Final Girl, but it's it's oddity. It's from the same director of Caveat, and this is horror films like this was a bold decision. Is he showed you what the monster is gonna be, and then there's a mystery around what the monster is. And, and 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 kind of those other things I want to spoil anything I am I I won't get any sort of uh, detail details at all this, this is only like a week in the in the theater I got to see it and it was just one of those where the tension was just amazing single location super claustrophobic and it was the type of thing where I, I I am ready for the conclusion and I'm ready to leave just so I can have this freeing feeling of being outside so the director did an amazing time of having you care about the characters, as well as get me out of this house. And Oddity was, was was fantastic. And if you start adding in Immaculate, you add in The First Omen, and you add in Double Blind, add in A Violent Nature, I'm just going to keep adding films on here. These are all films that were released this year. You put them all together. This has been an incredible year of horror films with strong female leads. Five of my top ten films are all female leads you got uh, love lies bleeding in there quite a horror film but i'm just like this this is just outstanding and and i i'm so excited for what next will happen in 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 the, in the cinemas because i'm a type of person that will go in the cinema all the time i go there front row don't have to be bothered by anyone and people are like uriah why why don't why don't you want to what about what about what about you go to inside out there's a kid there the kid's gonna ruin the film kid's gonna ruin the film the thing is it's like a movie as i said is a miracle I and mean, you get to experience that without anyone talking on their phone or disrupting you and you have an amazing good time that is a miracle that's a miracle cinema that's a miracle before art gets taken over by the darkness of ai and before that happens i'm gonna at least give my viewpoints of what movies i like share them with you and hopefully i didn't ramble too fast because i'm trying to connect thoughts that i haven't been able to do a lot before i i've, I've liked to discuss movies I like to talk movies but a lot of times people just haven't seen them yet and what was very very interesting is, 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 is on the topic of final girls is is a wrap this wrap, put a bow on this conversation so to speak is is I think Barbie and Oppenheimer was the first time since probably living in a small town and living in Montana where I everyone was talking about the films and I thought that was just a beautiful beautiful moment and it's hilarious that it ended up being those two films but go ahead and if you like what I'm saying. And you want to keep hearing me talk about films. I'm never going to talk about the bad films and ridicule them because it's hard enough to get them started. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I'm Uriah Westman. I'm also a comedian who has a show, Three Cults Walk Into a Bar. I sold out the first two of them. And the next one is September 27th at the Lyric Hyperion. Look out for I will be going to The Crow. And that will be fun. And I will I, I will do a special review of that dressed like a crow as well as 
Um, th- there's a bunch of other films we're gonna, I'm going to see. I'm going to keep doing this because I want to keep doing this. And I know this is a comedy channel, but I'll try to make these reviews hilarious. And this is an example of the type of person who is at a party and everyone is ready to leave and the Uber is called and they keep having a conversation even though they covered all the bases because I'm just very, very excited. And I just have to tell you guys that I had to re- re-record this. And do it all over again because the audio was all messed up. I bet you 